Hey, James, welcome back. I mean, we've got episode three. We've done the first episode talking about all things agents and introduction into agents. And then we had episode two where we talked about the different methods where you need, if you're wanting to implement an agentic workflow, what would they be? And we, we spoke about all those five different methods, right? Was it five, James? I think it was five. Yep. Yep. Five main ones. You know, they're intractable, but five is a, a good count. And this is going to be really exciting for us, really, because we're going to be demonstrating all the different five agentic frameworks as a demo. Yeah, so we're going to be going through uh, two in this video, and we're going to be going through some more in future right. videos. Um, yeah. But we, you know, we want to do them all justice, and we'll be starting more at the the less agentic end of the spectrum. So we're going to be starting today with routing and reflection, um, okay. and to show them off, we're going to be doing it in Databricks. Fab. Um, so obviously, you know, all these are very open source. Uh, all the frameworks are, you know, there's loads out there. Um, you can do them in whatever environment you want, really. Uh, I'll be doing them in Databricks because there's some great features that I feel like uh, make this a lot more obvious what's going on under the hood. But, you know, you could do this in VS Code, you can do it in PyCharm, wherever you want. Nice. James, would you mind just zooming in ever so slightly here so we can actually showcase the code? Brilliant. How's that? Is that better? That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Good stuff. So uh, to get started, um, I'm doing an install of LangGraph and LangChain OpenAI. Oh. So we're using OpenAI for these models. Again, you can use whichever models you want, really. If you're using the LangChain LangGraph ecosystem, it's very easy to swap out to a different model provider. Um, yeah. And we'll be using LangGraph purely because LangChain, you know, it's been at the forefront of LLM development for quite a while now. LangGraph is emerging as the next step, especially in terms of agents. So it's a really great and dynamic place to be focusing on to show off uh, the capabilities of these different patterns. So I have already run the installs. Um, so the use case for this routing agent is going to be um, a customer interaction. Um, a transcript comes through of a customer who wants to uh, either buy or rent a car. Um, and the agent will be deciding, who do I need to route this, this customer to so they get the best experience? So I'm setting up a widget. This is just going to contain our, our transcript text. Uh, we're going to be setting up our um, uh, environment variables so that we can connect to our LLM. Nice. Um, and then we're just going to be creating our LLM connection using um, Azure Chat OpenAI part of LangChain, and we're using GPT-4. And I think, you know, with Databricks, they've made it so seamless if you are wanting to work with an, a model post in the hugging phase or e even an external model. They've made it so seamless in terms of just getting it uh, hosted on the Databricks serving endpoint and just using it in a notebook like exactly what you're showing, James. Yeah, hundred percent. So you know, with uh, with these examples, we're using uh, the direct sort of connections to our um, OpenAI deployments. In future, we will be also showing off how you can use serving endpoints for exactly the same purpose. Very little code change required. You're just using the Databricks connections rather than the Azure ones. But yeah, it makes it super easy to swap between different models in these environments. So we have uh, created our LLM. And now we're going to get to the prompt and routing. It's very straightforward, quite simple. Um, so we're just going to import a few things from LangChain. Um, we will be using JSON structuring. So we're importing our JSON parser uh, and also a chat prompt, prompt template and runnable so that we can pass through arguments to the LLM. So our message is going to be, um, well, there's going to be two messages. The first is the system message, the assistant message, whatever you want to call it these days, it's always in flux. Um, but essentially, yeah, you're a call center assistant who directs customers to the best operator. And we've essentially given it two options. You can make the decision of sales or bookings. This is very simplified, but it gives you a good idea of what's going on. It can get a lot more complicated than this. Uh, and we also want a reason just for our own uh, sense checking. And then we will pass through the, the user message, which is, of course, their transcript. So we'll just run that. We now have our, our list of messages. And our routing chain is as simple as this. We pass through our transcript as a runnable, um, yeah. the messages, so our transcript gets populated, the LLM runs it, and we pass it as a JSON. And we will be invoking this using whatever is in our widget. So I would like to buy a car, please. Please, can you help me? Um, we'll run that. And Databricks uh, offers this really great feature where ML flow traces are essentially built in. So okay. you can see it's run and you can see all of what was going on under the hood. Yeah. So you can see the user, uh, that was our question, and the assistant came up with a decision, sales, reason, the user wants to buy a car. And we can also just output that a bit nicer here if we want to. So this is the routing happening here. Essentially, 
we're getting our output from the LLM and making a decision based on whatever that JSON structure said, sales or otherwise. Thank you. Yeah. And if we want to instead change it to, uh, I would like to book into rent a car, uh, we can run that. Um, the widget will will rerun our chain here. Uh, yep. So you can see it's just thinking. And then yep. if I just output again at the here, it's decided I need to re redirect to bookings. So yep. that's it, routing in a nutshell. And what, what Databricks has also got an offer here is Databricks apps, right? So if you wish to package this as an application, that also can be done by using Databricks apps. Yeah, so you can have a lovely little UI built in the streamlet, all hosted through Databricks. It yeah. can access either your models on OpenAI, um, Azure, yeah. AWS, or yeah, through Databricks endpoint serving as well. Cool. I'm really keen to see the reflection method now, James. Reflection, yeah. We'll start getting a little bit more agentic with this one. Yeah. Um, so we'll quickly close down that sidebar so we can see a bit better. So yeah, I've yeah. already run my installs again. Um, so this one, I'm just going to, again, import um, my, my secrets and connect to an LLM. In this case, I'm going to have two LLMs. So yeah. we've got a, a clever one, which is GPT-40, and a dumb one, which I'm being a bit harsh, um, <laughs> but that's uh, GPT-3.5. Um, yeah. And so this is already showcasing how we can have different models for different purposes. Um, so as our reflection is going to be a classic maker checker pattern. So our maker is going to be um, a student writing an essay uh, about writing haikus. Um, okay. So um, it's going to attempt to write a haiku based on whatever you ask it to write about. Uh, and yeah. if it receives critique, it will try and uh, make a new one based on what it receives. So we can run that and just ask it to, to write a nice little haiku about turtles because why not? Nice. <laughs> um, so we ask it to, to write its haiku. You can see uh, MLflow pops up again. This, that was yeah. a system message, write a haiku about turtles. And there we go. We have a haiku about turtles. Uh, so that's the maker. And yeah. now we have the checker. So the checker, we're using the, uh, the dumber LLM. Uh, and this is essentially saying that you're a really mean poetry teacher marking a haiku submission. Um, I've asked it to be a little bit harsh. Basically, nothing is ever good enough. The, the student will never be able to give a perfect answer. Um, and I feel like I'm being quite mean to the models, but that is just to make sure that in this demo, it's always changing. It never settles and says, yeah, this is actually really good. Um, so we give that uh, reflection prompt to our marker, checker, dumb LLM, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and we can see an example of this in action here. So just wait for a few seconds for that to run. Uh, and again, using these really great inbuilt tools on Databricks, you can see the previous chain we've already seen uh, by Taiku about turtles. That's what our, our student came up with. Uh, and now we can see our assistant is giving some, some comments of maybe you should change this, maybe you should change that. Um, mm. And that's the checker. So now all we need to do is put them together. So we can see here, if we repeat our uh, maker, passing through the AI messages um, that we've previously had. So what was originally made, the marking, the checker, and then we go yeah. again. Uh, you can see, yeah, we've got, please write a haiku about turtles. Here's the feedback. And so it gives it another crack. And that's yeah. the beginning of reflection. But you know, just doing it once, that's not great. We can't really control that. We don't know how many times it's going to happen. So this is where land graph starts coming in. So we can start to put together a graph which I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Uh, and we'll basically just have a start node, a maker node, a checker node, yeah. and they'll just circle for however long um, yeah. until we get receive an output at the end. So we'll begin to set that up. Uh, we'll define a state. This is a standard part of land graph. This is the state that each node on that graph will, will have, so it knows what's going on. Um, the generation node, this is uh, our node, which is the, the maker, you know, it's making yeah. the haikus. And we have the reflection node. So you can see here um, that it's essentially taking the previous states in our graph. So all the yeah. previous AI messages uh, yeah. and it's invoking the reflector um, based on what we've already yeah. seen, so you know. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, so we will run that. Uh, and that's it. Our graph is pretty much good to go. We just need to put it together. So we create our, our state graph, our graph in general. 
Um, and we add our generate and reflect nodes and also somewhere for it to end. Um, and in this case, we're just hard coding when it should end after uh, six iteration, iterations, so three back and forths. Yeah. Um, but this could be an, an LLM can decide when it should end or a, a certain amount of seconds or some form of other iteration limit. Uh, so we will put together our graph and we can run it. And this is your graph running. So you start off with an initial message, generate a haiku about the world's tallest tree. And you can see it here thinking it's back and forthing between the two different uh, two different models. Yeah. Um, and you can see throughout this um, that there are, there you go, there's our teacher saying, oh yes, another attempt. So you can see that throughout this, um, it's coming up with um, a haiku about a tree and in, yeah. you know, forest whispers, whatever that says. Uh, and then it's changing over time. So you can see that our model is updating how it's uh, how it's generating its haiku based on the previous feedback. And just have a, a quick look at what our, um, our graph actually looks like. We can see it as this nice little diagram here. So you'll yeah. see these a lot when you're working with land graph. It's like the standard way to visualize your graph. Uh, yeah, you start, you generate, you reflect, and you keep going until it's finally time to end. Uh, and yeah, this is our our overall interaction between our marker and our maker. And that really, is, in a nutshell, a reflection. I mean, so really what you, you've shown here is in less than five minutes, we can get started on routing and reflection, agentic workflows on Databricks. Right, exactly, less than five minutes. Yeah. I don't think it'll take more than five minutes. Question for you, James. Can we share this notebook with people so they can get started with routing and reflection? Most certainly we can share this notebook. Really? Uh, as I say, you know, this is all Langchain, so it's very easy to swap out. Um, yeah. All you've got up here is uh, when you're defining your LLMs, these can be any sort of LLM endpoints that you want. So if you're on Azure, if you're uh, hosting your own, if you're using Databricks serving, all of the different Langchain options are available to you. You just need to swap them out and you can get cracking. Brilliant, James. I mean, I'm looking forward to episode four already. Do you want to give us a bit of a, a sneak preview as to what to expect in episode four? So we'll be getting even more agentic next time we're going to be looking at tool calling and we're also going to be looking at planning. Brilliant. I look forward to that, James. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for giving us a demo on Databricks. That looks amazing. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Gabby.